Hello, everybody. Welcome to Education 3000. I am Noemi Paimal, the founder of Education 3000. Welcome. Hi, Naomi. Hi, everybody. I'm David Fegan, the International English Program Coordinator here at P3000. This is our third video in our Level 1 series of 25 videos, co-recreating education. What are we going to talk about in this video, Naomi? Oh, yes. Today is very important. It's about neuroeducation. And you will see all the fundamental, all the background, all the research the neuroscientists has done, have done on education and what to do and not to do. And uh, we will have all the explanation on how to do this famous new education, how to provide better tools to the children and young people. And it's all based on science now and we have all the information and the explanation. That's why it's so important today. We prepare some slides as always. Can you see the screen? Yeah, there it is. And thank you to all the team of researcher. We have the Institute now in Uruguay, in Bolivia and in Spain. And we want to share like, I hope the latest news. So, neuroscience, it invites us to change education. It tells us why, and it gives us many, many practical tips, Naomi, right? Yeah, so it's a good conjunction. I mean, a good timing in the story of science and education, because now we all agree and we go, we all go to the same point. Like, um, first I wanted to show you this one. Yeah, can you see how the synapses will connect like this? Can you see that? Yeah, it's not really that we want more cells or more um, neurons in the brain, but we want more connection. So it's called plasticity of the brain. And basically we want more synapses. So that's why you get more synapses when you are in movement. And when we do something new, when you have creativity and fun, and that's, the good news from neuroscience. See, what we want is on the right, all these beautiful connections and lateral thinking and be able to do several things at the same time. And there is a lot of tools to develop that as well for my age, <laughs> for elders. And this is what we want, that the brain will keep active and uh, being linked to acti physical activities and with um, emotional stability and be loved always. Neuroeducation, do you so want to Neuroeducation or neuropedagogy uh, is a discipline that promotes a greater integration of education science for those who deal with neurological development. Why is and, that? Uh, yeah, it started in 88, so it's quite recent. Yeah, so, so what's the importance of, I guess, this quote in your opinion, Naomi? That's, <laughs> that's finally education as some backup is supported by science. And uh, it's not like, oh, it's nice to change education. No, no, no. We have scientific proof that we have to do uh, toward this new integral active education with protagonism, with fun. Now it's all demonstrated. And the first doctor was uh, Gerard, Gerhard Press. This is in Germany in Freiburg University. And the first class he gave was called neurodidactics at that time. Or neuro, yeah, didactic from pedagogy. Nice. And then today we are going to talk about those three doctors because they give you good, give us good insight. They are all from Spain. Do you want to tell us who they are? Sure, so we've got uh, David Bueno, who has a PhD in medicine, genetic researcher and neuroscience specialist, University of Barcelona. We've got uh, Javier Blumenfeld, who also PhD in medicine, uh, a pediatrist member, a podiatrist, sorry, member of the Observatory for the Development of Innovations in the Educational Field. And he's there at the Rey Juan Carlos University in Barcelona. And at the end here, we've got Ana Forez, who has a PhD in education science. She's an expert in neurodidactics, again, at the University of Barcelona, like David Bueno. Perfect. 
And um, by the way, this PowerPoint is based on the research done in Spain and South America. If you have any research in your country in English or Russian or Chinese, please give us a message and we can link uh, all those researchers together. This is one thing we love to do to create networks and to have information from all around the world. This one is from Dr. Bueno. This is so important, motivation and exercise. Yes, we have to move and do exercise. So the, the acquisition of long lasting knowledge always requires motivation and an active attitude. When a child is sitting during long periods of time in the classroom, it is unnatural. Totally. The, it was a crime to have the children sit, sit, sit and down eight hours in a row. Now we know it's absolutely what we don't have to do. At least we know what we don't have to do. And um, if you have a project, you can move, you can uh, go outside, do field trips. This is the way we learn and we have a long-term memory and it's fun. And uh, then you want to do more project and you are an active person. The other one. And we have another quote there again from one of uh, the doctors we saw there from Javier Blumenfeld, that physical exercise improves brain oxygenation. So, you know, oxygen going to the brain. Post-exercise, especially aerobic exercise, the brain works much better. Now it sounds obvious, no? But remember, 20 years ago, it was not obvious. And that this is why some of us and some of my generation, we suffer so much at school, and that's why we want to change it so bad. This and one. Exercise, exercise, sorry to cut you off now. I mean, what does exercise produce? It releases a neurotransmitter. What's it called? Irisin. And actually, not only one. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of a neurotransmitter. And we will see that later on, like uh, endorphins, serotonin, dopamine. But one is very interesting for knowledge and for learning, for the learning process, is irisin. And if you have movement, especially movement with repetition, like swimming, walking, dancing, aerobic, then the brain would produce something incredible called irisin and will enhance the plasticity. And this is of the, the brain, as I told you, all this connection of the synapses, and this is really the base of learning. And this is what Dr. Bueno is sharing with us. Dr. Bueno and uh, the three doctors we saw, they have a video in the internet and they are the first doctors who analyze the law of education in Spain. And the first doctors who said from a neuro education point of view or neuro from neuroscience point of view, this is not logical, um, the law of education of Spain. And then they help to give the tips how to do things correctly for the children and for the education. And for the teacher, because the teacher is more fun when you do all that. And here we can see the here we can see the neuropsychologist Alvaro Bilbao. Tell us a little bit about about him, please, Naomi. I think he's from Chile, and he has a a book where. Oh no, sorry, from Spain. He has a book when he explains to the parents how the brain of the children works and what to do and not to do. So he wanted to teach the parents, based on neuroscience, the different tips. And uh, he ended up, yes, he's from Spain. And he gave us four steps for parents and teachers. Yeah, those four steps, love that should not be mistaken for overprotection. The second one, physical exercise provides oxygen to the brain, as we saw. The third one, neuro-healthy nutrition. And the fourth one, stress management and self-control. And neuro-healthy nutrition will be like lower the sugar, all the colorants and all the chemicals and processed food and go back to a more natural food, especially food for the brain, like nuts, all grain, and uh, fresh vitamins. Mm -hmm. Después, Lucas Raspel, yes, is from Argentina and is the advisor to the Ministry of Education of Uruguay. He had a book as well. 
you want to translate neurociencia para educadores yeah so in english the book's called neuroscience for educators and and i think you, you really admire this this guy right Naomi? you're telling me that you, you think he's he does great work great because he's the first one to stress out about the stress <laughs> especially in children we shouldn't put children you shouldn't put children and the young people under stress this is really damaging the brain and the learning process a little bit maybe but all the time no yeah so we can he says we have to reduce the amount of stress in children and young people stress damages the brain hurting short and long term structures and functions and this is i mean this is heavy stuff this is not a joke really be careful with that because then it's a, it's a change. Then you have stress on the teacher, stress on the parents, stress on all the children, young people, on the society. And then we have all this diseases and uh, the immune system is getting lower. I mean, this is really a disaster. And who wants to learn under stress and uh, with fear and with all these negative feelings? No, we want the children, the young people to be happy, stress-free, and creative and um, blossom. This is the new education. And I think something that probably our viewers can relate to, at least some of them, is, is that really the impact of stress, that, that people have felt the impact of stress during the pandemic that we're experiencing right now, you know, maybe sometimes fe somebody feels a symptom and they start to worry. So we need to take this seriously with children's learning as well, because we can see how it affects our <laughs> health as, as adults as well in stressful situations. It's not a joke. Exactly. Very, very important. Sorry, and Naomi. As we worked at the Ministry of Education, now it's um it's easier to see clearly where we have to improve and how. Uh, this doctor is from Chile, Esteban Gomez Muzio, and he started the all movement on positive parenthood. So we have some tips for positive parenthood. The first one is to provide comfort and answers. Secondly, offer confidence. Thirdly, listen. Fourthly, let the children know where you're going and when you return. Give him or her objects that provide security. Be positive. Take a deep breath before acting. And, and the last tip that we've got here in the list, how did you grow up? So don't pass on your own negative and painful experiences to your children don't repeat pattern oh but that's the way i was raised ah uh -uh, this is not a good reason this is not a good excuse we are here to really uh, cut break this chain and uh, go to the new paradigms and uh, if something was painful to you why to pass it down to the your own children you don't want it for you so you don't want it for them right so be very careful with that and be positive and if there is some doubt, you lose control, just breathe, wait a little bit and act on a very peaceful level. Never, never act when you are in, uh, angry or in a burst of anger or upset, never act. That's easy. And if not, take a picture of this and uh, one by one, you can say uh, today I will see that to tomorrow the other one and make sure this checklist is done. Very good advice, very practical. Listen to your children. And uh, a very dear friend, Nicolas Lujan, is from Argentina. We did many congress with him. And he's, he's a doctor and he loves education. So he opened us um, schools for parents and school with little ones as well. He doesn't like the name school. He, uh, let's say a learning environment, and it's beautiful. Let's see what he says. We will do another program on that, by the way. So, uh, Luhan says like that this unity mind, body, and brain sort of uh, trio promotes an integral teaching learning process. Children today need to be in motion to incorporate and consolidate information. And um, it talks about the positive st stimulation secret for learning. This is a secret we will see in the brain. So we will see in details later on. Let me tell you when I have it here the list. It will be 
the video number seven. And it's very important to understand this with circuit because if it is blocked, you can learn. If it is open, you can learn endless amount of information and uh, you can have an endless amount of creativity. And again, it says be in motion, move, move, oxygenate, oxygenate, oxygenize the brain. And don't forget, mind, body, and brain is one unit. It's not only the brain or only the body, or only emotion. It's all together. We are one. Love is the key, and it's beautiful. And remember, grandfather, grandmother, aunts, uncles, everybody, teachers, enterprise. If you work in the municipality, it's all about education at all levels and for all ages. So again, you can check out all of this information on our YouTube, which is below in the description, the website, Facebook, and get in contact with us as well. If you've got questions, if you want to be part of the project, send us an email. Thank you. So what's our next uh, video? Oh, next video. Uh, Extremely important. Emotional intelligence the base of every learning and the base for any kind of development of the human being and of the society. So we will see emotional intelligence in all details with a lot of exercise what to do. And what to do. So please check out our next video. Thanks again for all the awesome information, Naomi. Thanks as well to you guys at home who are watching. So the next video is going to be about what? Can you remind us, Naomi? Emotional intelligence, how to open the heart and how to socialize and how to handle with our own emotions, our own emotions, but the emotions of the other person and how to be empathetic. Perfect. So that's our fourth, nice subject. Our fourth video in our series, this is the level one series in co-recreating education. So I'll see you, Naomi, next time and, and see everybody else. Subscribe and everything, yeah. Like, comment, and tell us what you do around the world. Thanks. <laughs>